you're watching Nevada Business Chronicles. Take a journey with us to see the innovative businesses that put Nevada on the business map. Connecting you with the businesses, events, and organizations that bring innovation and prosperity to the Nevada area, please welcome your host, Mitch Burney. On today's episode, we're here with John Yespa, who is running for State Senate District 16. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Many people might not have heard the announcement yet, so let's talk about Absolutely. Senate District 16. What area does that encompass? It is south of Meadowood Malls, all the way to Douglas County, so it's, it's southern Reno. It is 100% of Carson City. It goes up Mount Rose, uh, Montrose, Arrow Creek Golf Course, as well as uh, Washoe Valley in between, and then Crystal Bay and Incline Village. And down next to Hidden Valley also. Absolutely, as far east as Hidden Valley. Quite a extensive area. It is. It's Large been, district. It is. So first question I have to ask you is why did you decide to run for state senate? I've been here involved in the community for years. Um, I'm just a citizen like everybody else. Uh, we're all kind of fatigued with the politics and uh, lack of transparency. Everybody talks the political game and nothing's getting done and no one's being held accountable. So um, I've just ratcheted it up decide to get involved and just become a citizen, you know, representing the community. That's it. Politics as usual, people are sick of it. And the fact that you are vested in the community, you're very active in the community and not a politician, I think is going to be very attractive to a lot of people because you're just passionate about Northern Nevada. Let's talk about some of the things that you've done since you moved here. I moved here. I got involved with the veteran community. It was some of the projects I was working on before I moved here, and I just brought them here. Um, the, my corporate job, I work for a major airline, so it gives me the ability to fly around so I could fly back and forth to Vegas and work with some of those groups back and forth. We uh, helped start the Fisher Foundation, the Fisher House in Las Vegas. Um, I sit on a couple different boards around town so I can uh, help bring different projects to the people that can raise the money and facilitate those projects happening. Uh, we started Honor Flight Nevada. We've taken about a thousand veterans back east to be honored uh, for their service and sacrifice. Uh, we've raised about a, a little over a million dollars for that project. So there's a lot of different things. I've been involved with Ronald McDonald House and uh, just so there's a lot of, there's a whole list of different organizations that I've been involved with volunteering over the years. Let's talk about Senate District 16 and some of your agenda, if you don't mind. First and foremost, it's uh, lower taxes, more accountability, more transparency. Uh, the community and the citizens, I'm one of them, I pay taxes. I think we just want our value for what we pay. It's uh, the commerce tax was put in front of the citizens and it was voted down by a majority, but yet the legislature in their infinite wisdom voted for it. They're imposing taxes on businesses, which trickles down to all of us through cell phone bills or user fees or casinos. So people just want value for their money and they want transparency. They want to see where their money's coming from and where it's going and how it's being spent. And I think there's a lack of that these days. So what are some of the basic functions for Senate District 16? It's a large territory. It has diversity from one of the wealthiest communities at Incline Village, Crystal Bay, to down here in the valleys, Carson City. It's uh, transient workers. You know, a lot of people go from Reno to Carson City to work for the government. So you have all levels. You have blue collar, white collar. You have trades, men and women. You have military. It's a diversity. So. There isn't a quick fix or a patch that's gonna work for everybody in this district. I know a lot of people right now that haven't met you personally or know of your involvement in our community are going, well, who is John Yespa? I moved out here with my job with Southwest Airlines. Um, I plan on staying here six months and uh, you know, I've grown roots. This is my home, this is my family. These, I'm part of the community now. Um, six years ago, I started Honor Flight Nevada um, I didn't, I don't, I, I joke, but I don't have any living grandparents. And in Nevada, I have six or 800 grandparents I can get a hug from anytime. So this is, this is my home. This is where I come from now. This is, uh, I'm involved in the community five, six, seven days a week. We're raising money for the veterans. We're raising awareness for the veterans. We're honoring the veterans. Unfortunately, sometimes we're burying the veterans that are part of our family. I'm out there, so I get to hear what the veterans say and what they speak and what they're looking for. 
um, issues that are so important these days are suicide prevention and awareness. You know, if we can help raise that awareness and help prevent and deal with um, some of these issues, it just needs to be done. Where did your passion for the veterans come from? Um, you know, I don't have a definitive answer. Um, majority of the men in my family have been in service. Um, how can you not give back to, especially World War II? They're our grandparents, our great grandparents. They just left the country, left their jobs, left everything behind to give us our freedoms and, you know, so forth. Coming forward to Vietnam and Korea and the current day veterans, these are folks that just step up and give service before themselves. I mean, how can you not support them, give them what they need, honor them, you shake their hands and become friends? Now you were one of the original founders for the Honor Flight here in Northern Nevada, but you've been doing this for longer than just that. Absolutely. I've um, been involved with Honor Flight nationwide and mostly on the East Coast for over a decade. When I moved here, it was something I thought I could just volunteer. I didn't know that there wasn't a program here, so I started Honor Flight Nevada. And about two, three days a week, I would fly down to Vegas, get in a rental car, and go out to the rural areas down there, the rural areas up here. Um, so it was, I didn't know it, but I guess it was like campaigning. Um, got to meet all the locals, all the family members, got to hear the stories. Every day I get another story, I get another email, I get a text message. Um, we have compiled hundreds of thousands of pictures of our local veterans. They're part of our family. You're a humble man as well because you left out some of the accolades, some of the awards that you've been presented and earned. So if you wouldn't mind, tell us a little about those. This year, uh, I was honored to be the 2017 recipient of the Citizen of the Year by the RGJ paper. Um, I traveled to DC and I spoke at the Capitol for the Jefferson Award representing Nevada. And then I flew down to Dallas. Uh, my employer, Southwest Airlines, uh, presented me with the President's Award out of uh, about 50-some thousand employees. That's quite a year. It's been a good year, but more importantly, it's been a good year for the community. You know, I might be the face, not the greatest face, but I'm the face of the program, but it's, you know, it stretches for thousands of people. So I, I received it for others. Well, that makes you the greatest face. Thank you. What I like about you, John, is that you're one of us, you're a citizen, passionate about what's best for our community in Northern Nevada. One of the things I think that people are put off by in politics is the lobbying. And what do you stand for as a senator for District 16? I personally believe that every constituent, every citizen, whether you're a voter or non-voter, you live here, you're paying taxes, you're part of the community, should have access to their elected officials, whether it's state, whether it's local, whether it's federal, there should be this transparency. You can make an appointment and see them. Um, my cell phone number is on my business card. You know, I'm not going to change stuff like that. So if something that is important to you, I need to hear it, I represent the constituents. It's not a one person, one vote. You're only the representation of the constituents. I think a lot of times people get elected and then that's the last people see of them. Absolutely. But you are out in the public already and that's not going to Five change. or seven days for the last six years, I've been pretty much everywhere I can be or need to be in this community. I don't plan on changing that. I still run some nonprofits, so I'm going to be out and about. I still have a, a real job. You know, I'm a blue collar worker, so I'm there as well as everybody else. So, uh, and what I think the system needs, the more you listen to folks, the more you learn. There's, there's not enough listening and not enough learning. It's elect me and I'll tell you what's best for you. So transparency, accessibility, and there's even more. Uh, you mentioned to me uh, something about conflicts of interest that exist many times in elected officials sure. that you want to see some changes in that. Whether well, there's a change in the actual written ethics or system in place, even if that's not necessary, it should be transparency. It should be brought up front. This is what I represent, or these are my clients, or this is... Uh, I have no problem of telling people I work for Southwest Airlines. If there were a bill that affect aviation, you know that up front, and it might be the situation where I need to step back, or I can get more involved from an expertise standpoint, but it's not hidden. It, I don't represent somebody in the shadows. Um, I represent the community, so everybody should know what every representative 
does, where their conflicts of interest are, so we can address it um, and avoid it. You know, this is about making the community and the state better, not about the person's uh, employer or job or their pocketbook better. Well, that's one level of transparency, ethical transparency. But transparency goes even a little further. You were talking about even when answering to questions about where you stand or what you vote in different situations. To vote for or against something in the legislature, I guarantee you 100% of the folks are not going to be happy. There's always going to be somebody that it affects differently than the other side. The answer is you vote the right reasons, you have transparency, you come back to the community and explain why you voted for everyone, even if they're 100% behind it. You still explain the benefits. Nowadays with social media, with accessibility, whether it's the website, social media, uh, cell phones, you know, I plan on being accessible the same way I am today and I can always explain why I did something because I don't, will not have a conflict of interest. There is no ulterior motive, so I can always explain the answer why I voted w the way I did. John, I want to thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Being accessible. Always. And transparent. Just about 24 hours a day. To learn more about John Yespa for Nevada, visit Yespa, Y-U-S-P-A, number four, Nevada.com. Thanks again. Thank you. For more information on this guest or to see this show in its entirety, visit nvbusinesschronicles.com. While you're there, you can watch all of our past shows on the Chronicles page and stay connected with us by following us on our social media. Now more from Nevada Business Chronicles. I am really excited to introduce Sharon Oren with Maccabee Arms. Good to see you again. Good to see you. This is pretty incredible what you're doing here, first of all. Oh, thank you. I'm impressed. Your kindness, your heart, your generosity, people are going to learn a little bit about as we describe what's going on here. Okay. Well, first of all, you know, it's my honor. I mean, uh, I'm a disabled veteran myself. Uh, our shop is all, basically all of our employees, everybody here is a combat veterans. Most of our staff are disabled veterans. Uh, so for us, teaming up with Honor Flight was pretty much uh, seamless. It was uh, an, a natural way of going. Um, and the whole concept of Honor Flight, how it's being operated, the people who are behind it, uh, it's an amazing group of people, so we're real thrilled of taking part and being part of the Honor Flight family. So for people that are not familiar with Honor Flight, tell me a little bit about what it is and why it's so important to you. Well, Honor Flight basically uh, started in the East Coast, in Baltimore. Uh, and uh, in Nevada, it was founded, I believe, about six years ago by a gentleman named uh, John Yutzpa. Uh, basically, what we do is we uh, fly World War II and Korea veterans, now also some Vietnam veterans, uh, back to D.C., to the memorials and all the uh, monuments who were built in their honors um, before, you know, unfortunately before they die. Um, what we do is it's it costing them no money. There's no cost to the veterans themselves. It's kind of like a mini boot camp, if you want to call it that way. We basically fly out Friday morning early. We fly out to Baltimore. Then uh, Saturday we're doing basically a marathon day through D.C. with full police escort. It's pretty amazing. It's an amazing experience go and see all the uh, monuments in D.C. Uh, and it's a commodity. It's a, basically, it's taking those guys that are in their 90s and taking them back to boot camp. You know, it's, uh, the family drops them off with us on Friday morning and take care of dad, take care of grandpa, you know, is this medicine, this medication. Don't, and they're trusting them with a bunch of strangers like they did in, when you take your kid to boot camp, if you think about it. And uh, there's a bunch of us uh, volunteers, uh, what we call guardians which we fly with them. Uh, we pay our own way to go, so it's not being taken away from the money portion that we get for the veterans. Um, and we push those wheelchairs and we cater and we run and we do everything we can for them. And uh, it's just amazing. It's, it's uh, you know, I mean, uh, listening to those stories, seeing those men, I mean, you know, the generation of this country. Um, and, and it's a great honor. As, as a veteran, uh, I'm Jewish, I'm Israeli born and raised. Uh, so I have a special connection for the World War II vets especially because if it wasn't for those guys, my family or what was left for my family after the Holocaust would not be here today, so I would not be here today. Or as I like to tell them, I mean, if it wasn't for them, my father would not have been able to make it to Israel and join the IDF and become an officer, and neither would I. So uh, it's, uh, it's an amazing thing for us. Well, 
and an amazing thing you're doing to give back. So tell me about this firearm okay. and what it's worth and how people can buy a ticket and donate by buying a ticket to the Honor Flight. Definitely. So this is a FN Herstel product, uh, basically FN Browning, if you heard about them. They are the main manufacturer for the United States military. Uh, it's not Colt, it's actually FN. This over here is the 249 saw, which is the light squadron machine gun. This is a semi-automatic example of that firearm. Uh, it retails for about, I believe the MSRP is about $10,000. Uh, what we decided to do is we're raffling uh, 100 tickets. They're going to be $100 each. Once the last ticket is being sold, we're going to raffle the firearm. And the lucky winner is going to have a $10,000 classic military edition FN249 uh, saw. And in return, uh, all the profits from it are going to go to Honor Flight so we can fly a few more veterans back to D.C. So you get to do something great for yourself. You have a chance of one of 100 to win an awesome Awesome collector's gun. Or if you buy more tickets, you have more chances. More chances, to win. exactly. Uh, and, uh, and the money's going to a great cause. Amazing cause. So, regardless if you win or not, you're giving to the Honor Flight program and supporting the veterans and giving them a chance. Many of these veterans have never seen the memorials that were erected in their honor. Most of them have not. Very emotional. I can tell you that I'm going to be a pretty tough cookie, to say the least. And. Uh, before I went for my first round of flight, a friend of mine who is also a veteran told me, hey, buddy, don't leave your Kleenex at home. And I'm like, ah, I'm a tough guy. I'm Israeli. You use a lot of uh, handkerchiefs and Kleenexes, and uh, it's, it's, it's pretty amazing. Uh, you're seeing all those great people, and, and you, know, uh, you know, by the end of the second day, we're all basically wiping each other's tears. Yeah. So it's an amazing experience. Well, there's less than half or just about half the about tickets, half tickets left, left yeah. before this drawing ends. Mm -hmm. So come on down to Maccabee Arms. Yep. And the address? Uh, we're at 2105 Kitsky Lane, uh, right in the corner of Kitsky and Apple, across from Reno Toyota. Uh, and just come on in and uh, ask one of the guys uh, to buy uh, tickets. Uh, and the more tickets you can buy, the faster it's going to be. Uh, and like I said, it's a great, great thing to do. And uh, the thing about us is, you know, we are locally owned and operated, you know, and I believe that, uh, you know, by the community and for the community. We've done it in the past. Uh, unfortunately, when Carlo uh, died, uh, was murdered uh, on duty, uh, we raised money for the family, for the, for the kids. Uh, we are really involved with the law enforcement and the military community locally. Uh, so it's pretty natural for us to do that as well. So it's, it's an awesome thing. Great firearm, great cause, great business. Sharon, thank you so much for what you're doing here for the veterans. No, thank you for flight. Thank you for doing what you're doing to spread the word in the community. We appreciate it. Thank you. For more information on this guest or to see this show in its entirety, visit nvbusinesschronicles.com. While you're there, you can watch all of our past shows on the Chronicles page and stay connected with us by following us on our social media. Now more from Nevada Business Chronicles. Corporate event, casino event, wedding, or just a reason for celebration and to party, this is your girl. This is Tracy Schroeder, McLean's mobile DJ. Thanks so much for joining us. Oh, it's a pleasure. Tell me a little bit about McLean's mobile DJ how you got started in the industry. You have quite a number of years worth of experience. I actually started my DJ career right after college, which I majored in radio and TV, but I was the electric lunch girl on a classic rock and roll station in Millshoe, Texas. Yeehaw. Years ago, Texas. <laughs> and then I moved to Dallas, and as part-time work, I started DJing for weddings for complete music, and they've been in the business forever. But it was back when it was cassette tapes, <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> which I don't know how I survived that. So now, obviously, it's so much easier because all my music is on the computer and at my fingertips. I can pull up a song by artist or title, and we have clean digital edits, with edits which is great. What are cassettes, first of all? There's no <laughs> way you look far too young I to know. remember the days of a cassette. <laughs> That was DJ brutal, was... now that I think about it, because it was so hard. You had to get one song ready on this deck and fast forward this deck. It was insane, so now it's a lot easier. 
So tell me when you opened or founded, started McLean's Mobile DJ. So McLean's Mobile Music and DJ was actually started by Bill McLean. He is my awesome brother-in-law. He started it in 1982. And I actually bought the business a couple years ago and we've just grown exponentially. It's been incredible. Exponential success may be an understatement because I've known you through this process. And your company has grown and there's a number of reasons why you've grown. You now have how many DJs? I have five DJs. And you run a full year, around the year, through all the different seasons, all the different events. A lot of people are not familiar with the difference between you know, your standard mobile entertainment and hiring a professional company like yourself. So let's talk a little bit about being licensed and insured because there's a lot of reasons to be insured. There are, <laughs> and, and I don't think everybody really understands that. So tell me a little bit about the liability part of, of having a, an entertainer come that isn't insured and what risk that presents to the organization or party. The reason it's important to be insured is there's a lot of liability. There's heavy equipment, you've got cords across the floor, which we actually gaffer tape. We spend a lot of time making sure our equipment is safe, but we can insure the venue as additionally insured, so if something does happen, the liability doesn't fall on my client. So the music, we actually pay a subscription to be able to play the music in public which is a big deal because there's tons of fines that could come out for you not being licensed to play the music in public. When somebody's hiring entertainment for their wedding, that's a big day, important day. Well, quite honestly, every event is. But when you're talking about somebody's one of the most important days of their lives, there's a lot that goes into actually providing that entertainment. And you do a lot of upfront work to we do. make that day special. So let's talk about how you conduct a wedding properly, professionally. As soon as a bride and groom hire us to host their wedding, and it truly is hosting it, from the first dance to the last dance, we make sure the photographer's in the loop before we do any event, because there's a lot of events that happen at a wedding. And I make sure people are where they need to be. If they're gonna toast the bride and groom, I make sure the people actually toasting are in the room, <laughs> ready to go. It's a lot behind the scenes that we coordinate that you don't actually see. There is a lot that goes into a wedding. And you just mentioned making sure the photographer is at the right place. But you also make sure that all of the accessories are in the right place. For an example, for the cake cutting, I've seen you actually set up the table, get the people right. there, and make sure everything's ready to go before it's announced. Like, is the knife there? Is there a plate, napkins, forks? Because <laughs> you don't want to announce it and then they're not ready. It just makes it really awkward. So behind the scenes, that's what we do. We make sure everything is ready to go. You're kind of coordinating the entire event between the caterers, the photographers, your DJs, the guests, the toast, even the introduction coming into the room. There are a lot of people you have to herd to make sure they're ready for the grand entrance, for toast. Whatever is going on, you have to make sure that people are ready and in place. Music is a big part of every wedding. You don't just show up and randomly play. You spend time planning that part of this event as well. Absolutely. Everybody has different tastes. So I want to understand my bride and groom's vision. Music is so important to a lot of people, and everyone has a different taste. So I have online planning tools where my bride and groom can go actually pick music that they love. And they don't have to pick our playlist for the entire evening, but I do want to know what are some of your favorite songs. Because music makes people feel a certain way. And I want them to have the music that they love. Bryn. You guys can go in for cocktail hour, but if we could have immediate family stick around for some pictures, it would be most appreciated.
you do a variety of different events. As a matter of fact, you actually, your organization hosted the candy dance. Right. So tell me, that's a big event, thousands of people. So one of the things I'm proud of with these outdoor events is we have the equipment to fill the space. So we have multiple DJs. If we had two stations or three, we have the ability to do that. We've got wireless speakers where we can throw the sound to another speaker further down the road. So you can cover the whole space with sound and it's amazing. Here's the Hula Hoop competition. Everybody put your hand together for them. Candy Dance is only one. You've done a lot of large, outdoor, big events. So tell me a few of those. We have. We've done car shows, street vibrations. We've done Brews and Blues Festival, Hot August Nights. So any of these festivals that come to town, we are absolutely thrilled to host them. We have some really fun games like Name That Tune Bingo, anywhere from 1960s to today. We've got classic commercials and TV theme shows where we have bingo cards, just like regular bingo. We play a snippet of the song. If they recognize the song and it's on their bingo card, they get five across and yell bingo. It's a lot of fun because people start singing along. And <laughs> so those are fun for corporate events. And we also have speed quiz, which the your cell phone is actually your controller. So we send a question to your phone and they answer on their phone. And that's a lot of fun too. Tracy, we're coming up on the holiday seasons. A lot of corporate parties coming up. Yes. A lot of holiday parties and events throughout the uh, festivities of the holidays. How would people go about booking McLean's Mobile DJ? Well, they can call our phone number 775-246-4550 or look us up at mcleansdj.com. Don't forget, licensed and insured, but more than that, Professional entertainment for any event. Wouldn't think of hiring anybody else. That's Tracy Schroeder, McLean's Mobile Music and DJ. Thanks so much My for joining pleasure. us. My pleasure. Thank you for having us. For more information on this guest or to see this show in its entirety, visit nvbusinesschronicles.com. While you're there, you can watch all of our past shows on the Chronicles page and stay connected with us by following us on our social media. For information on becoming a guest on our show, contact us at info at nvbusinesschronicles.com. We hope you enjoyed the show. Thanks for watching. Tune in next week at the same time for more from Nevada Business Chronicles.